All right, now for EKG, also called a 12 lead. So the doctor will usually order this if a patient comes in with chest pain into the ER, or if a patient's going to surgery and the doctor wants to make sure that this client has a history of cardiac dysrhythmias, and now we have a stable cardiovascular system. So Kat's gonna help me by visualizing the chest. And you wanna visualize the extremities as well. Because on a 12 lead, they call it a 12 lead, not because there's actually 12 leads here, but because we actually have 12 views of the heart. So we're basically, in essence, gonna wrap the heart with these little stickies to visualize the heart. So the first lead, we're trying to measure from the collarbone here and go four intercostal spaces down. So you can fill in between the ribs, one, two, three, and four. And the goal is to hit right in between the intercostal space and on the sides of the sternum. Never over the sternum because we wanna get a good read. If we go over the sternum, it's probably gonna block the electricity uh, that the leads are gonna pick up. So lead two goes exactly in the same position on the opposite side of the sternum. Then we're gonna be going one intercostal space down for lead number three. Sometimes you'll see EKG techs go right here, and sometimes off to the side, but right here in the intercostal space number five is the actual ideal goal. Now this is a female, we wanna go as much as we can underneath the adipose tissue because we want really good skin contact to get those electric waves. Then we're doing the same thing with lead four, trying to stay in this intercostal, fifth intercostal space. And lead five should be right here. Now the goal here in the rule of thumb, listen close real quick, is lead number six. It should be right here on the axilla. So right under the armpit, that is the goal. Remember, we're trying to wrap the heart to get these views of the myocardium. Now, Kat's gonna help me out with the other side here. When you're placing the extremity leads, make sure the leaflet here goes back up to the heart. So as you guys can see, right on the meaty part of the um, Does it the matter forearm. if I go here? Does it matter if I go here? It's real important to go here? Yeah, so we wanna go on the inside here oh. on a good meaty part, okay. pushing back up. The only reason for this is because I'm gonna show you guys when we actually hook up the leads, you don't want the leads to wrap around the arm. You want them to lay nice and flat to get a good read. And here you go, around the meaty portion of the calf. Some hospitals will say on the foot. I like the meaty portion of the calf. It gets a really good reading. Now for our leads, we are going to set these up. So we have lower extremity leads, upper extremity, and then one through six here. So Kat's gonna show you what it looks like and how each one is a little bit labeled. So right here, you can see that this one is V1. And if you'll remember, Mike actually labeled these as he went around. So that's gonna be V1 for his lead, okay? That's gonna go around the heart. So all the ones around the heart are gonna be V1, two, three, through six, okay? So those are gonna be his leads that he's gonna put on. Now I also have for example, LA for left arm. Now, is it my left or her left? <laughs> it is the patient's left. And here's another hack here. Sometimes they can get like spaghetti noodles and get tangled. You're gonna get a really good reading if they are separated and flat as possible, especially if the patient has tremors and it's really hard to get a reading. So, to be honest, it really doesn't matter uh, if you go in order or not, but as long as the lead connections are in the correct place. So I am doing V1, V3, here we go. It's just connecting the dots here. V2, thank you cat. All right. And sometimes you'll see your leads kind of alligator to the side or to the left here. So RL for right leg, and that's gonna help me. Not all leads have that helpful um, little tidbit on there, but you're at least gonna have a graph that you can get and look at. Um, usually it comes with the EKG machine so that you have some sort of a, an understanding of where these go. But again, this one happens to be labeled for right leg and left leg, which is super handy. Mm -hmm. And trust me, when the, when the doctor's barking, 
and the patient is coming in with severe chest pain and you're in a rush in a hurry, the patient's sometimes diaphoretic. They're going to be sweating. Sometimes these stickers are going to be sliding and you're trying to hook things up. It's just crucially important that you put them in the right place and that all you can get as flat as possible. Because when the patient has a lot of pain and they're moving, it's going to throw a lot of artifact on this EKG. And then the doctor's going to have you redo it. Because with artifact, you're not going to be able to see those ST elevations or really anything that we're trying to see. So once we have everything put in place, usually you'll tell them to take a big deep breath out. And they'll try to be as still as they can. And depending on the EKG machine, it'll take 3 to 10 seconds to get a good reading and then start printing out like earthquake paper. Now, anything else do you think we should be doing? Should I leave the EKG stickers on? Yes, it's so funny you say that. So the doctor will usually reorder the EKG uh, a little bit later. So when a patient comes in with an MI, we're going to be doing multiple cardiac enzymes like troponin, as well as multiple EKGs. We want to see if the patient's getting better or worse. So all it is basically talking about reevaluation. So keep the stickies on during the ER stay. Now, if a patient's going uh, to surgery, all we're doing is a quick check for the cardiovascular system. All right, guys, that wraps it up for EKG. Thanks for watching.